Hi, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to talk to you about valuing rent control departments from the point of view of an owner. This is something that uh, a lot of people don't have a good handle on how to do, and it's something that uses what's called a real options approach. And the real options approach gets a lot of uh, conversation in the academic literature. People theorize a lot about it, but I want to show you a very simple use for it. And again, this would be for valuing rent control departments from the point of view of an owner. So here goes. Let's say hypothetically, we've got a 10 apartment building, 10 unit building, and currently the rents are $18,000 a year, say 1,500 a month. And let's say hypothetically, if the tenant left tomorrow and you could re-rent it at full market, they would be worth $24,000, in other words, $2,000 a month. So basically, if the tenant just walked out the door one day and you rented it to someone else and you could get market, there's obviously some value creation. Now, one could build a simple schedule that shows today everything is at market. And maybe we assume hypothetically that three units per year roll over. And this is just a very simple calculation that says, hey, uh, starting in year two, um, let's take this number, and this number is just going up by one at a time. D don't worry too much about that. But what this is basically doing is saying in year one, everybody is rent controlled. In year two, seven people are. In year three, four are. In year four, one is. And then finally, everything's rent controlled, is not rent controlled. And, you know, even in a building where people are, have below market rents, people move out sometimes, right? They get a job in another city. Uh, they get married and move out of the apartment, they die, stuff happens, right? Rent control departments do come back to the market just because, you know, stuff happens. And while people will have lots of discussion about this, you know, 10% of rent control tenants move out per year just given natural attrition of life, the universe, you get the idea. <clears throat> anyway, moving on. So the first approach that people use is kind of primitive. They say, well, if this guy's paying $18,000 and if he moved out, I'd make 24. Then if the person moved out, I as the owner would make $6,000 more per year. If you wanted to make 6% on your money, then basically if someone moved out and you were making $6,000 per year, that would be worth $100,000 to you. Just really simple math, right? 6% on your money means a $6,000 per year increase in annual rents is equal to 100 grand. But what should you pay the person? <laughs> now, like, let's say you could pay them to move out. You could buy them out of the unit. On one hand, you might say, well, anything up to 100 is a win because, you know, anything up to 100 gets me 100, so that's a win. But let's remember that every given year, a certain percentage of people just move out on their own. So on one hand, maybe it would make sense to pay them to move out. On the other hand, if they were going to move out on their own, then why would you pay them to do so? I mean, that doesn't make a heck of a lot of sense. So how do you figure out what this is worth? It's worth less than 100 because people move, might move out on their own, but there's clearly some value. Well, this is what you could do. You could say, well, if they move out, it's worth 100. Let's say hypothetically, in any given year, and this is just me playing with the numbers, in any given year, there's a 10% chance that they move out and a 90% chance that they stay. Okay. So in year one, the $100,000 of value creation happens 10% of the time. The them not moving out happens 90% of the time. So year one's cash flow, year one's increase is worth $10,000 to you because it's 10% of 100 and 90% of zero. In year two, of the 90% of the people who stay, 10% of those people in year two might move out. So 10 of 900 plus 90 of zero. But this is all multiplied by the 90% because this only happens 90% of the time. In other words, year one's value creation is worth $10,000. Year two's value creation is worth, in this case, $9,000.
which means year three's value creation is worth 8,100, et cetera. So what you could do is you could build a little table that says, let's say we were creating $100,000 of value. And let's say we wanted to make 8% on our money, just to play with it for a moment. If we wanted to make 8% on our money, and when they moved out, we'd get $100,000, what we could do is we could first do this. We could do 10,000 and 90% of the remainder and 90% of that remainder, et cetera. So we get 10,000, 9,000, 8,100, 7290. And all this is doing is saying, take the remaining amount of time and keep figuring out how many years it goes by, and then take 10% of 100 grand. And the formula is there in case you're trying to figure out how the heck I did that. That's the formula. It's basically saying 90% of the time to the power of the number of years minus one times 10% times 100 grand. That's your nominal value. If I discount each of those nominal values at 8% per year, so in other words, 10,000 in year one is worth $9,000 to me because it happens at the end of year one, $6,500 in year five is worth $4,400 to me because it's again happening in five years. If I take the nominals and add them up and take the discounteds and add them up, you get the nominal sum and the discounted sum. And what this is saying in plain English, to just get to the punchline, is that if I was going to create $100,000 of value if the tenant moved out and I wanted to make 8% on my money and there's a 10% chance of a unit rolling in any given year, then in theory, I would give this person around $50,000 to move out today. If I gave them $50,000 to move out today, I'd be creating enough value that after you take into account the fact that they might move out on their own anyway, it would still make sense. And this is what's called a real options approach. And this is how you value uh, what a buyout on a rent controlled unit can be. Now, obviously you can make this a heck of a lot more complex. There's a lot more machinery we can put into place, but as far as valuing things that have a value but the value might get created on its own even if you did nothing, this is an approach that one could use. Uh, and there you go. So if you find stuff like this interesting, you might want to check out my website at carrealestate.com, or if you have ideas for other videos that you think might be interesting, again, check it out at kahrrealestate.com, or email me at info at kahrrealestate.com. Uh, thanks again for joining me. And again, my name is Josh Carr at Carr Real Estate. Best of luck and enjoy your modeling days. Bye.